Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm finally getting around to a reviewing a pen I've had for a couple of months but because I was away on tour um, I haven't been able to review. I did put out a very short quickly made video when I got it um, and it came in a box that looked kind of like this. Um, you can see beautiful sort of scroll work of you know my name and a nice sort of wax seal and the twine and if you look carefully in that wax seal, you can see where this pen came from. It's the logo of Mr. Ryan Krusak. Now in this box, um, as well as, you know, the card there with some information about the pen, the pen came in a little cute pen kimono here. Um, and I have shown this pen, so it's a beautiful pen. It is the L16, and this is the Dragon Slayer, or the Fafner, as uh, we've come to sort of call it. It depicts, uh, the imagery here depicts the Dragon Fafner being slayed by Siegfried, which uh, is a scene from Wagner's Ring Cycle uh, opera series, which uh, is absolutely phenomenal and a favourite of mine. So when I spoke to Ryan about the potential of getting one of his pens and doing a review and things like that, he straight away said he knew exactly which model I had to get, and uh, I really had to agree with him. So these are, are a numbered limited edition, up to 150 per design, uh, and as you can see there, this is 66 of 150. And uh, the artwork on this pen is laser engraved scrimshaw uh, in moose antler with an ebony cap, which is also likewise sort of engraved with these like dragon scale, you know, kind of pattern on it. It is absolutely phenomenal. So L16, L is for legend, which is the basic model shape and his legend models of pens ranging across a number of different materials um, different sorts of artwork all of that the legend is the basic shape and the 16 indicates the size meaning that this one has a 16 millimeter barrel so it's a big pen it's almost an oversized pen now i'm going to talk about the parts and features of course and then uh writing sample and pros and cons so Starting at the top of the pen, it's got a very gentle sort of peaked sort of finial there. Um, and then the cap swells out and then carries along in this beautiful, as I said, dragon scale um, patterned ebony. And then a little step down onto the barrel, which is, as I said, moose antler, which travels along and then tapers down to a little, once again, peaked end cap there. The material is smooth with these engravings sort of being texture on it um, and as I said this is laser engraved in unique work by Ryan um, which is then sort of um, put on multiple pens he's a real artist as well as a very very fine pen maker the cap unscrews in about two and a half turns and the threads are very smooth the cap has a plastic liner there with the threads on it uh, which go into these brass threads here on this brass section which is an aged brass um, and the brass, the section tapers down, little, little sort of, not necessarily even a flare, just a little, like, little ridge there on the end, and then we get a steel Yovo nib, and this is sort of like, um, I can't remember the term he used, but like, burnt or something, you know, like, it's got, it's, it's a, it's tarnished, um, and with the Ryan Krusak logo on it there, uh, it's Yovo, and then, see the feed there, which is lovely, just a really beautiful pen. You unscrew the body, brass threads, once again, very nicely machined, and we get a Schmidt converter. It takes standard international cartridges and converters, um, and the you'll hear that like the fit on this is like, it's absolutely snug, uh, which is just beautifully made, just really beautifully made. This pen can come with a couple of different kinds of section. I chose brass uh, and it does come at an extra cost, about 30 US dollars for the brass section. Uh, but it is, I liked that. And I one thing I really enjoyed about that is the weight uh, and the balance that that allows this pen with the moose antler being a fairly light material. And then, uh, you know, sort of um, 
the weight really leading down towards the nib. And because it is a number six size nib, you get a good length from the page. It's very ergonomic. Uh, and these threads and this step down, the step down is actually slightly rounded. I can't see, tell if you can see that, but it's slightly rounded, so it's very smooth under the fingers. Uh, in fact, it actually is, can be a relatively nice place to rest your thumb uh, when writing with this pen. Now, because it is a standard number six Yovo nib, it does come in a range of sizes, and uh, they it is offered by Ryan in extra fine, fine, medium broad, 1.1 millimeter and a 1.5 millimeter nib. Uh, so good range uh, and something for every writing size and even the pen go uh you know there's the different sizes i think down to a 14 12 or 14 millimeter barrel um means that you get lots of different sizes of pen so whatever hand size you have there's going to be something for you the pen does technically i suppose post it is not a pen i will be posting um i don't think the threads on this material is a great idea, even though it is plastic. It just, like, it feels secure, but it, do, it only goes in really a few, you know, millimetres, probably half a centimetre. And uh, I just don't think it needs it because this pen is such a good size. Um, I, I would be super surprised if even the biggest hands couldn't use this pen incredibly comfortably. For what it's worth, here is a size comparison. I put it alongside a Lamy Safari pens at very different ends of the spectrum in so many ways. You can see it is much longer, but it's the girth of this pen that is also so uh, impressive in the hand. Here we see them uncapped again, uh, and, you know, once again, that size, it, you know, it's not, it doesn't dwarf the Safari, but it is just so much, there's just so much more to the pen. Posted, it's very long. Uh, certainly doesn't need to be posted, this pen, uh, but you can see just how much longer than a Lamy Safari it really is. So what are the specs of the L16 um, Dragon Slayer from Ryan Prusak Studios? Well, length, 148 millimeters. Good size pen. Not so big that I won't fit another pen in most pen cases though, which is really great. Um, uncapped, it's 140, uh, which, you know, like is actually not dissimilar to the length of a, you know, capped Lamy Safari. As it certainly big enough for most hands, and then uh, 191 when it is posted, which is just way too long. As it doesn't need to be posted. The grip section there goes from about 11.5 to 13 millimeters. It's a chunky, chunky section, and you feel that in your hand. But it's not so big that it feels awkward, which is great. And then the pen weighs 51 grams, 42 in the body, and nine in the cap. So it's got a great weight, and a lot of that weight is in this brass section here, which, as I said, when you're holding that, that's where you feel the weight of the pen, and uh, it's a really comfortable weight in your fingers. Time for a writing sample now. I have my regular Clairefontaine 90 gram paper here. I've had a number of inks in this pen. I've had Diamine Oxford, I've had Waterman Serenity Blue, I've had Lamy Black, and now I have Robert Osser Tranquility, one of my absolute favorite inks. So this is a medium steel nib. It has been tuned and, you know, sort of um, adapted by Ryan Krusak. And it's lovely. The uh, ink, as I said, is Robert Oster. Tranquility which by the name is kind of interesting given the situation shown on the pen. Okay, writing time. Oh gosh. Quick writing.
looks and sounds pretty good to me. It's smooth. It's not a super wide medium, this particular one. It's got great flow. Um, you know, like I'm applying no pressure to get that kind of flow out. The pen writes so well under its own weight because there's so much weight going down towards that nib. It's really lovely. Reverse writing. It's not great. It's a bit scratchy. Um, get a couple of words out if you needed to. And it's not a flex nib. It is not going to be bouncy at all. But once again, laying down a nice amount of ink. So you can see it writes consistently. It writes smoothly. It allows for nice shading and all of those kinds of things from this ink. It's got lovely, generous flow. Um, it's just a real joy to write with. So at this point, I want to talk about the price of this pen. Now, I spoke to Ryan about specific things I wanted, and um, he was very generous in, you know, sort of, you know, giving me a, a, a slightly reduced price uh, for this, and I'm very grateful for that. It made this review possible. Um, but what you are paying for is you are paying for both a pen and also for a work of art. As I said, it is a limited edition, numbered edition, 150 of each design only. Um, you're paying for incredible workmanship and interesting material. At full retail, this pen was quoted to me by Ryan at 495 US dollars. So it is a fairly expensive pen. You are not buying something run of the mill from you know China or out of a factory from Germany. This is you know, basically one guy who sources the, he goes out and gathers the moose antler. It is all, you know, sort of naturally shed um, and, you know, sort of found and he creates the pens. He shapes everything. He does the artwork. This guy is an artist and you are buying a pen and an amazing work of art here. So is that price worth it? That is going to be up to you. It is expensive for a cartridge converter pen that uses a standard number six steel nib, but you are getting so much more than that with this pen. What are the cons of this pen? There is one con, one con I have, and that is the fact, and it's not even a con, it's just something to be aware of. This is natural material. So a little extra care needs to be taken. This is not the kind of pen you throw in the bottom of a backpack. This is not the kind of pen you have rattling around in your pocket next to your keys. This material is, as I said, it's natural. It's moose antler. It's going to get warm. It's going to, you can wet, it, it can be worn down. Um, but also it can get dirty. It can show signs of use. Um, and also, so things like ink will stain this because it will go into the fibers of the material as opposed to just like being washed off the top, like if it was plastic. So these are things to be uh, aware of. But in saying that, um, the material will, if you love the pen and use the pen, the material will show signs of that, which can be quite nice. It will patina um, and it will colour uh, across its lifetime as well, um, as will the brass of this pen. So there are nice things involved with the fact that the pen will show its use. Other massive, massive pros. I do love the fact that this is Moose Antler. It's, that's, there's a cool factor to that, absolutely. The artwork, it is beautifully done. Like there we see that dragon, which like the detail of that is unbelievable. And the fact that this is a cyclic piece. So like we start there, we work our way around, we see the dragon and we see Siegfried there and his landscape turns into the landscape of the dragon. And so it's beautifully done, it's seamless, it's precise. Obviously it's laser uh, engraved, but it is designed and drawn, you know, with beautiful attention to detail, uh, with that little signature there at the bottom. And then, as I said, 66 of 150 engraved there. And that is discreet. Like that's not like in your face at all. And there's no big sort of in your face branding on this pen. I love the balance of this pen in my hand. The weight of that section is beautiful. It's heavy, it's a heavy pen, um, but it doesn't feel heavy because the weight's not holding your hand down, it's leading down towards the nib, and as I showed in the writing sample, it writes so beautifully under its own weight because of that. It's a well-tuned nib that actually, you know, the pen helps write. 
The other thing I want to say that I love about this pen is the quality of the workmanship. Not only the artwork and the quality of the engraving, but the finishing and the cut and all these, it's very nicely done. Um, he really knows what he's doing and uh, it shows in every, every detail and element of this gorgeous pen. I hope you found this review of the Ryan Crusack Studios L16 in the Dragon Slayer uh, design work uh, to be um, useful and interesting. And uh, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the channel. Please, you know, like and subscribe and please, you know, comment on any of my videos here or drop me an email. If you've got products you think I should be looking at or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. Once again, a big thank you to Ryan, who was so amazing in, you know, creating this beautiful pen for me uh, and uh, providing it at a slightly discounted price uh, that makes making these videos possible. So thank you for watching. Enjoy your pens. Enjoy writing. And I'll talk to you soon.